Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, that is my shop partner Oots, and today I'm going to be building a second story deck off the back of my pole barn. We're going to be finishing that upstairs into our apartment, so we need a way to get up and down from there. All the techniques and pretty much everything I'm going to be doing for this two story deck will scale down and be just fine for a regular deck coming off of a first floor. So let's get started with the layout. All right, first before we get into layout, I want to give a quick disclaimer about codes. Now, building codes are going to vary all across the country. They're going to even vary within the state and even within the counties. Each township or city may have different codes. They're going to be pretty similar, but they're going to vary. So it's important to contact your local building authority, your local inspector, and find out what the codes are pertaining to your deck. It's best to kind of come up with a layout of what deck you want to do, and then they'll be able to take a look at those plans and let you know if it's going to fly or not. Those codes are usually based on the international building code, and each state will have their own codes based off of those practices, those international best practices. Here in Michigan, the Michigan Builders Code is a great resource that I have, and I look at that for reference. But I found this book called um, deck codes and standards and it was put out by Black and & Decker and it's broken down in layman's terms a lot better than the Michigan Building Code reference book. So I would highly recommend this. I'll put a link to this down in the description. Some things that are going to vary from place to place are going to be your and from deck to deck are going to be your post sizes, how far they span between the beam. The beam is the big board that's going to run out here parallel to the barn and how much can it span between posts and how far your joist can span. The size of your joist can go up and down. There's a lot of variables that change depending on the size and the shape of your deck. So it's really important to look at code and look at something like this and it'll help a ton in designing yours. So now down to layout, I'm going to leave the design and your individual specs up to you to figure out and I'll show you kind of the general practices in building the deck. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out where I want my posts and the concrete footings. Here in Michigan we have a frost line of 42 inches in the zone that I live here in Michigan and that means I have to go at least 42 inches down into the ground for my footing. And because this is a two-story deck and the size of it, I'm going to need to go at least an 18 inch footing and that is so that you have enough resistance and force so that the deck doesn't sink and because you're below that frost line, water doesn't get underneath there and freeze and heave up your footings and push your deck and over time wear things out. So that's why you need to be underneath the frost line in your area. Other areas that might have high winds and hurricanes, those footings serve to help from the deck being pulled out of the ground by severe winds. I used batter boards with string lines attached to them to lay out my footer location. My deck was a little complicated because I had stairs running to a platform and then the stairs take a 90 degree turn. But the important thing is to make sure your footing holes will be squared to the structure and you square your string lines by measuring diagonally from corner to corner. I put out a post on a local Facebook community group and I was able to find a guy locally with a skid steer and an 18 inch auger to come and drill my footing holes for me. I also drilled holes for the footers for the open air lean to that I'll be adding in the future and so I had the required minimum amount needed to have concrete delivered. If you only have a few footers then you can just mix the concrete yourself. Then I can set my half inch J bolts into the wet concrete. I'll then bolt my post brackets to these and nail my posts to those brackets. All right, now I'm going to make the beam, which is going to sit on the 6x6 six six vertical post, and then the joist sit on top of the beam. To make the beam, I'm using two 2x12s two that I laminate together using 3-inch hot-dipped galvanized exterior nails, and I'm spacing those every 12 inches and doing about five nails per run every 12 inches. Now, the reason you want to use nails in most of your deck framing is because nails have what's called shear strength, they will hold really well when two pieces of wood slide next to each other and all the movement over the period of a deck, you kind of want that kind of strength rather than what screws have, which are tensile strength. Those are really good from, for not breaking, being pulled apart. They hold two pieces of wood together like that, but they don't do good when wood moves. They'll tend to snap because they're really brittle. So that's why in most deck framing, it's really good to use nails, just good old fashioned nails. There are a lot of really good screw type fasteners that manufacturers are making nowadays, but they're way more expensive than nails. The nails do a really good job and nails are accepted 
on pretty much all code as long as you're using big enough and exterior grade galvanized nails. So that's why we're using nails on most of the framing here and we'll use screws to hold down the deck boards. Again, I wanna clarify that you definitely can use screws. You just have to make sure that they're exterior grade and they're designed for decks and that they're accepted by your local code. For the beam, I hold my nailer at a slight angle in alternate directions rather than shooting the nail straight in. These alternating angles will make it significantly harder for those boards to ever come apart. All right, now I'm gonna be preparing my ledger board, which is the board that's attached to the side of the building. And right now there isn't flashing up there, so I'm gonna be attaching some flashing. I will slide that up underneath the side of that metal siding, and then it'll rest on top. This lip will rest on top of that ledger board, and it'll make water run in front of the board instead of getting trapped behind it. Then I'll be using these big ledger lock type screws to securely attach that ledger board to the side of the building. Now, you'll have to figure out what the proper spacing is depending on how long your joists are and what the span is between them. That's usually on the screw manufacturer's packing material and it's something that you should just check with code. What I'm gonna also do is make sure I know where my joist layout's gonna be so that I don't put these ledger locks right where I need to attach my joist hangers or joists. So I have those that are going on and then we're gonna be looking at putting joist hangers on next. I use a scrap piece of two x eight that's the same size as my two x eight joist and use it to line up and nail my joist hangers in place so that the joist will sit flush with the ledger board. All right, so now I need to figure out the height of my post. And since this is a two-story deck, it's a little bit challenging, but there's a really easy way to do that. And what I have here is my laser level, and it's kind of hard to see outside, but what I can do is I can set it up, and it doesn't really matter where it's at because you're gonna measure up and down from that line. So out here on my post bracket, I can drop my uh, tape measure down and I have a measurement of seven and a quarter inches. Now I can come over here to the bottom of my joist hangers because the bottom of the joist is going to be the top of the beam. And so my post is going to be the same height as my beam. I'm going to notch it out. So I can come over here now, hook on to the joist hanger, come down to the side of the building where I see that laser level at 142 inches. Then I'll add that seven and a quarter inches to it. And then I'm gonna also subtract three quarter inches to give the slope of the deck a little bit of a downward slope to help with rain runoff. Now I'm gonna do that for all three individual posts just to make sure, cause my footings might not be the exact level. So the best way to make sure that everything's good is to do it on each individual post and it's really easy. I use my circular saw and a hand saw to cut the post to length, and I also need to notch the top of the post for the beam to sit in. And I used my circular saw to make a bunch of relief cuts, and I used a hammer to knock all that out and uh, chisel to clean it up. But on the last one, I decided to try to use my circular saw and rip cut both sides and use the hand saw to cut away the middle section, and it worked out really, really well, actually better than all the relief cuts. It's recommended to apply a wood preservative to any cut parts of your pressure treated wood, especially if it's going to be in contact with the ground. Nothing on this deck will be in contact with the ground, but it's a good idea and I did it anyway. I should have mentioned earlier that you should install your post brackets first before measuring the post height, or make sure that you subtract the thickness of the bracket when you're cutting your posts. I position the post onto the brackets and then use some long 2x4s to brace the post in place and get them plumb.
Once the posts were plumb, I nailed them to the brackets and it was time to get the beam in place. The beam was super heavy and so I came up with this idea to use ratchet straps and I slowly would raise one side at a time and clamp it into place so that it wouldn't fall down and then do the other side and I was able to walk it slowly up that way. It was definitely the most challenging and scary part of this build and if you're building a two story deck, make sure you're super careful anytime you're up on a ladder or dealing with something heavy overhead or anytime you're just up high. I used heavy duty carriage bolts to secure the beam to the post and then I start installing my joist. I nail the joist to the joist hangers first so they wouldn't fall and then I go over to the beam where I can properly space them and attach them to the beam using hurricane ties. These hurricane ties will prevent the deck from lifting off the beam in high winds. I also put blocking between each joist over top of the beam to help prevent the joist from tipping over. Some might think that's overkill, but I really wanted this thing to be super stable. Then it's on to the easiest part of the deck build, and that's screwing the deck boards down. These deck boards are really wet still, and so I'm placing them tight together, and as they dry, they'll shrink a bunch and give me between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch gap. I always leave my joists long so that I can dry fit my last two deck boards, then I'll mark the ends and subtract an inch and a half for the thickness of the rim joist, then I can cut all those joists so that the final deck board will sit perfectly flush once I install that rim joist. Now onto the stairs. Laying out stair stringers takes pretty much an entire video, so I suggest watching a few of those online to figure out how to do that. But I laid out my stringers and I had just purchased this giant 16 inch circular saw so I decided to lay out and cut all four pieces for my stairs at once. It was kind of fun using this saw and it worked pretty well. Before I cut all four boards, I did cut the ends off of one of the boards to make sure it landed on the landing properly and that the steps were going to be square. You can kind of see the two end cuts on that top board. Now because the circular saw blade is circular, I needed to finish the cuts by hand. I used the hand saw first, but then tried the reciprocating saw, and that worked a lot better. Now with some help from some buddies, I was able to hang the stair stringers. In most cases, you're gonna to have to add another board below that outer joist for the stringers to mount to. I used the normal stair stringer metal hangers and then I blocked up the joists behind the stairs to really strengthen up where those stairs meet into that top deck. I used two by sixes for the tops of the steps. Once the steps were done, I actually switched gears for several months and did a ton of work on the exterior of the barn, the interior of the barn, where I turned it into my dream shop. I replaced all the windows, soffit, and fascia material, and I also finished the upstairs apartment, which is where we were going to live. And there's actually all sorts of videos on my channel of all those different things, so feel free to subscribe and go check those out. I'll also leave some links down in the description as well. But that is why it's several months later and there's snow on the ground before I was able to finish the railings. I secured each 4x4 post to the deck using two carriage bolts. There's code for the maximum span that's allowed between posts, as well as the gaps between the bottom rail and the top of the deck, and also between balusters, so make sure you know what those are. On the main deck section, I ran my rails on the inside of the post, and then I secured my balusters to the outside of the rails. But because of how I had my stairs tying into the upper deck and how the posts were laid out, I thought it would look better to have my rails running flush between the posts on the stairs and the landing. 
The two by two balusters split really easily, so I always pre-drill my holes for those. And the max allowable gap on balusters in most places is four inches. So I just use the two by four, which is actually three and a half inches wide, held between each baluster to get my spacing right. Now the last baluster in a run is most likely gonna have a different gap than all the rest. Now you can, however, do the math and find out the exact spacing for each run so that all the gaps will be equal. But on this deck, I wasn't really worried about that. And honestly, I don't even notice that there's a different gap at some of the ends. Here you can see about a quarter inch gap formed between those deck boards, even though I install them when they're nice and tight. After those boards dry out, you have plenty of room for water runoff to get down between those cracks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something to help you build your own deck. Again, make sure you check out all your local codes and rules before building your deck. Good luck and thanks for watching.